Yeah, boy, yeah, boy, yeah, boy. Welcome to Watch Me Build It. Gonna have a quick episode today. Quite simply, what I'm gonna be doing is taking the Ballin Ross Belly Tanker Homage watch, removing the bezel, giving it a brushed finish, and reinstalling it. I did this because, as you would have seen in the partner's head to head review, um, I just found the bezel was too shiny, um, it made the watch look too dressy and the applicability wasn't as broad as it could be. Further to that, the original Ballin Ross Belly Tanker has a matte bezel, as you can see in the photo that I'm inserting at the moment. So let's flip the camera, turn around, come along and watch me mod it. Right, just a couple of tools that we use in this particular project today. A bit of electric tape and a blade. This is just to protect the watch case. There's a Swiss Army knife and a bezel tool, both of which are there to try and pop the bezel. We've got a normal spring bar tool. We've got steel wool and the watch itself. And then the last thing we're going to be using is a watch case holder just to keep the watch case firm while we're taking the bezel off. So here we have the watch in the case which is protected by a cloth and we've got the electric tape on. I've also popped a link on the bracelet so that it can hang over the case and I've got my Swiss Army knife and my bezel tool and I'm ready to go. So I'm going to begin with a Swiss Army knife. And the reason I've got two tools is that in my experience sometimes the one works and the other one doesn't. Also I'm being very cautious with this removal having damaged um, a bezel recently. Um, so the Swiss Army knife wasn't getting there easily enough. Now I'm using the bezel tool and the bezel tool popped the, the bezel quite easily. And I've just brought the Swiss Army knife into the final removal. At this point I realized that the crystal was press fitted into the bezel. So I fetched a glass so that I can remove the bezel with the crystal place the glass over the watch and pre prevent dust from getting in while I work on the bezel. Okay, so at this point I had a little surprise. As soon as I lifted the bezel, the glass came along with it. I'm going to insert some photos in a moment. I didn't do detailed film footage of this and so I thought let me do some sketches for you. But what I discovered was that the crystal is press fitted into the bezel with a gasket. In the footage you'll see me doing the brush footage with the crystal in the bezel. You don't need to do that. If you push the crystal from the back edge of the bezel it will easily come out. Put that to one side and do your brush finishing. Um, but then if you have a look at these sketches they show the order that you need to do the assembly. First you need to put the case down. Then you need to put the gasket down into the case. Ensure that the gasket goes in the correct direction. Then you insert your crystal, make sure there's a nice fit with the gasket and then when all of that is done then you can drop your bezel on and press it in with the press. I've also shown a cross section. In this cross section you can see in a bit more detail how the case, the gasket, the crystal and the bezel goes together. I hope this helps any of you who are doing a bezel mod on one of these chronograph watches. All right, so here we go. We're ready to begin the brushing process. First, I'm just inspecting. You can see the crystal that's being pressure fitted into the bezel. You can see the white gasket showing through. In this footage, I attempt to press the bezel out um, from the front towards the back unsuccessfully. I later found out that you, if you press from the back towards the front, you can pop the crystal and do your job. Now we've got a bit of steel wool. I had wet it um, to help with the process. The water then destroyed the tissue. I decided to remove the tissue and just carry on on my green cutting board. The idea behind this is to keep a radial action um, and not to, not to go cross, across the bezel because you're going to get scoring that, that just looks ugly. Um, the best way to do it is to keep your finger pressed up against the edge of the bezel and that will help guide you in a circular action. I began with the steel wool um, and I spent quite some time um, busy doing the brushed finish with the steel wool um, and it was getting there, it was taking a bit longer um, and I think had I continued with the steel wool only um, and being patient I would have achieved maybe a finer brushed finish 
but I got impatient. I grabbed some Scotch Bright, um, clipped a corner off of a Scotch Bright pad, and I began to use the Scotch Bright pad in the same manner. And so the Scotch Bright is a lot coarser actually, and it gets the job done a lot more quickly. I'm definitely not unhappy with the way the final product turned out. Um, and I would advise if you want a finer brushed finish, continue only with steel wool. If you're happy with um, a coarser finish, then you can use some Scotch Bright as well. Here I'm lifting the bezel up on its edge so that I can make sure I take the brushed finish in to the chamfered edge uh, beneath the bezel, just so that you don't have any high sheen edges anyway. I later went on, I replaced the tissue, I dried everything up, took the water out of the equation and found this to work far better. So I would advise leave the water out of this, use only dry um, scotch bright dry steel wool and you can rotate the bezel on the tissue surface quite easily. Look how well this is working. And this is a really great way of achieve, achieving a totally radial finish. Now what I've done is I've given the crystal a good wash. Hot water, soap, and giving it a good wash on the inside and outside. It's the only way that you can remove all of the fingerprints. But then I'm giving it a thorough, thorough drying off. This cloth that I'm using, you can see it says Torga Optical. It's actually a glass cleaning cloth for a pair of reading glasses giving this a thorough, thorough, thorough wipe down and dry. You don't want to trap any water on the inside of the watch because you're going to get inclusion of humidity as time goes by. Now I'm going to rotate it just to have a look at the brushed finish and see if it's even all the way around to get a feel for what it looks like. And um, this is when I begin to see that this project has worked well. Now I'm going to put a puffer in underneath the glass give the face a good puff with air to get rid of any dust that may have possibly settled. And as soon as that glass comes off, on goes the crystal. Um, there's footage I didn't take over here where I had to figure out how to place the crystal in the gasket. I eventually got those sorted out. Then I bring the watch in under the bezel or the crystal press, but this is to press the the bezel in place, so I've used um, dies that are wide enough to press on the bezel and not the crystal. And uh, having aligned everything, got it seated nicely, click it in place with a crystal press. And there we have it folks, we have a brushed finish on the bezel. I've just fast forwarded the removal of the tape because there's no longer any danger of scratching or damage to those beautifully polished lugs. And you can see the watch in its final form. But something I'd seen from the shots of the Ballon Ross were that a brown leather strap works well with this watch. And I happened to have one in my case um, of straps. I'm not gonna bore you with the detail. I installed the strap and would you look at that. I am far, far happier with this final product. I think the brushing on that bezel has really done a favor to this watch. It goes so well with this strap and it is very close to the original. There's a bit of a close up. You can see the brushing is rather coarse, um, but definitely not ugly. Um, in fact, I quite enjoy this final product. If you have any thoughts, I'd like you to leave them in the comments below. Here's a beautiful, or well, not a beautiful wrist shot, a wrist shot. I wouldn't say I had the most beautiful wrists at all. But there it is, guys. I just, I, a far better product. Really a far better product. And a few close ups. I also put a new rubber strap onto the Daytona homage, and I thought I'd include a few shots of that. There's my son's Bakugan, came to visit the watch. The strap's brand is Rubber B. And here's the two of them, both with new clothes. So what do you think of the final product? 
I am blown away. I really am. Putting a matte finish on that bezel and putting a leather strap onto this watch have really just taken it to next level and I'm really, really enjoying it. And what do you think of the rubber strap on the Daytona homage? It really goes well. That is a rubber B strap and I got it off of the Yang Kui watch store and it's a beautiful strap but it was quite a pain to install, I've got to tell you that. This is my son Ryan. He wanted to come and show his face today. Isn't he a handsome young guy? Hang on, there are two more coming. This is Caleb and this is Joel. Say hi guys. Hey. Say welcome to Watch what? Me Build It. Welcome to Watch Me Build It. Guys, thanks for watching me mod them today. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, click the bell icon with notifications and then your phone will tell you every time I post a new video. Goodbye. <laughs>